Hey guys, Peter Steel here, back with another video. Today we are going to be playing as Hungary. Yes, Hungary. I have been inspired by my last stream as the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and I figured it's about time we update the Miklos Horthy and the Habsburg Prince Achievement Guide. And with the help of our dear community member Antasil, thanks Antasil, we have got some very spicy updates for you. We've managed to iron out most of the RNG, so let's go. I'll leave it on Iron Man mode, obviously, and historical AI focuses because we need to know what the Germans are doing. But first, if you like these videos, leave a like, consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload more content. Also, check out the Discord channel. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And that's enough rambling for me. On to the video. Ah, hungry. No manpower, a half-strength army, it's all coming together. And for army organization, it doesn't really matter. You'll get better field marshals and some good generals along the way. I just parked my boys on the Austrian border. As for focuses, we will be rushing all the way down to invite the Habsburg Prince. So balanced budget all the way down to the Habsburg Prince. As for research, We'll start with the basics of engineering and production construction. Now, I will not constantly be repeating what I'm doing. I have a few early game picks that are rather important just to get you going. After that, it's just the basics of keeping industry up to date, keeping your doctrines up to date and your equipment or your tanks or your airplanes, whatever you want to do. Might even want to dabble with the Navy a bit because one of our enemies is across a sea and it's always easier to sail there. Anyway, for construction, we'll start with Civilian factories, four should do. That leaves us with production. We'll add an extra to infantry equipment. One or two artillery. We'll start making some transport planes, so you already know where this is going. And follow up with interwar fighters and close air supports. This is the initial production line. As for trade, I know we're running a deficit right now, but uh, I'm going to leave it at that because I need the factories that we have, five to make an intelligence agency. And it's going to be very important, this intelligence agency. This is how we manage to iron out most of the RNG. So for the Air Force, just, just park them somewhere. It doesn't really matter for now. And with that, let the game run. Now, with the intelligence agency created, we are going for a few early updates. The unfortunately named pills, pretty important. A diplomatic training, very, very important. And then I also pick up economy, civilian intelligence here, and invisible ink for more intel. Why do we need the intel? I want to see what Germany is doing. It's important to see what Germany is doing because we have to time our focuses just right. But you'll see, you'll see, don't worry about it. And our unfortunately named pills are done. Now I'm going for diplomatic. Diplomatic training, invisible ink, and civilian intelligence. I'm not going to be showing that on screen, just add to the video length, but you know what to do. After that, just hold off a little bit. As for our operatives, ideally we would get seducers, however, there's none available. And failing that, we would get somebody who has a bonus for diplomatic pressure. Sadly, we don't have one of those either, so we'll take what we can get and start building a network in Berlin. Try to get this up to 100 and then set it to quiet intel network, reducing the chance that the man gets caught. As for our first political power pick, pretty obvious, we go with uh, Silent Workhorse. 15% more political power. We spend PP to make PP. All right, my engineering's done. I'm gonna take the next level of engineering, followed by radio in this slot. All right, basic machine tools are done. Uh, I'm going for Dispersed, the love of my life, and I will be doing Dispersed all the way through to Dispersed 3, after which I will be reserving this slot for Military Doctrine. And our second batch of political power is here. I like to pick a Military Theorist here. I know, I know, we could also simply send an Attaché. However, the Land Doctrine Research Speed bonus does help. This is also a good way to start getting some Army XP early on. All right, with those upgrades done, we are going back to trading. We will finish the upgrades on a later date because we still need one more upgrade for the second spy slot, but uh, we don't have the civilian factories to get the cryptology department. We will have to wait until the Austrians have bent the knee. All right, with construction one done, we are going to quickly hop over here and yes, go for paratroopers. Yes, I know, paratroopers, it's a meme, blah, blah, blah. We need 
need every edge we can get and we're in such a terrible position. I mean, come on, it's just a little bonus. And now we just invite the Habsburg Prince and that's the first stage done. Our espionage network in Germany is going along nicely and we can see what focus they are taking. This is important but not yet. Just remember, as soon as this guy hits like 100%, set it to quiet Intel network so he does not get caught. And our next batch of 150 political power. Let's just set it to free trade and we'll have a few more bonuses to construction. Oh boy, we'll need that. Yeah, Hungary doesn't really start off in a good position and I'd rather not be free real estate. So we need to ramp things up as quickly as we can. Okay, the Habsburg Prince has been invited. We could go for the referendum now, but let's instead take a little detour towards secret rearmament, followed by industrial revitalization and reintegrate the railroads. So these three focuses first. Gotta build up a little strength. While we are working towards secret rearmament, we will also be saving up political power so we can go up to partial mobilization. We're going to try and secretly violate the Treaty of Trianon. All right, with those paratroopers researched, let's go back to the industry and get construction two followed by improved machine tools to after which pick whatever you want just stick to the basics of industry first army second and with secret rearmament done we can go to partial mobilization very nice our economy is suddenly well it's still shit but less so and we continue towards reintegrate the railroads with radios research we are going to take a quick detour out of electronic engineering for this slot and get fighter ones fighters are going to be pretty important to this austria-hungary not just to deploy our paratroopers but for other more nefarious means as well we have another 150 political power available and we are going to be picking the elusive gentleman giving us access to yet another other spy. Let's take another look. Uh, we got seducers, seducer and commando. So yeah, sadly, nobody here who can do diplomatic pressure. But we will take our second spy and put him on Austria to exert some diplomatic pressure. As for our German spy, he can set his intel network to quiet, just so we can keep an eye on Germany. And what we're looking for here is for Germany to reassert its eastern claims. So you'll have to take a look every now and then to see what Germany is doing every time you finish a focus take a peek at what they've started because they are no longer following their historical route once we eat austria they go off the rails then well sort of off the rails very well the railroads are reintegrated why did we do that well this gives us a bonus with the austrians and the czechs we'll need that to affect their decision making when they decide whether or not they want to be part of our new empire and secret rearmament makes us just a little bit stronger and allows us to get that better mobilization law now we demand a referendum and while we're doing that let's also improve our relations with the austrians just to give us the best odds we can so high relations reintegrate the railroad could get the army on the border I don't know if it works and get that spy there to exert some diplomatic pressure and we have another 150 political power now what I like to do with this one is if you look at these fighters we're about to get new fighters I like to take the light aircraft designer giving our fresh fighters 10% more agility and maximum speed not to mention making all the research quicker this makes our fighters better than whatever the UK or Germany is going to be putting out well a little better Better for now and we can use every edge we can get because their fighters will blot out the sun it's going to help if we can shoot down more of them than they can shoot down of ours and there we go our fresh new fighters now at this point i'm going to stop telling you what to do personally for this run i am going with tanks so i am going to get my trucks and follow that up with light tanks next for your game if you feel more comfortable playing with infantry you do so just remember industry first along with engineering then there's doctrines that need to be kept up to date and there is the infantry equipment to be kept up to date not to mention the artillery the artillery is very important if you're playing an infantry only game but like i said i want my tonks so trucks first and the referendum has been demanded let's see what the results are hooray we made a friend all right let's divert that spy to romania romania is going to be one of our earliest enemies so i want to start building up an espionage network in romania and getting those collaboration governments as soon as we can i want to get at least two collaboration governments prepared in romania for future use the rest of the army i'll just park them on the yugoslav border doesn't matter just yet we got fresh troops from the austrians i'll convert all of those 
themselves into our basic infantry. And we'll immediately queue up as many paratroopers as we can. Eight. Eight will have to do. They will be trained with a very high priority. Want to get them out the door first. And to ensure we have enough manpower for those paratroopers, you could theoretically take one or two of these divisions that the Austrians gave you and disband them for a little bit more manpower. We'll get enough divisions. Don't worry about it. Those two will not matter. Also, you don't have to. It's just, I like to do this because I'm strange, I guess. Anyway, we follow up with the restoration of Austria-Hungary, giving us a bunch of cores. Oh, and since we're technically occupying Austria at this point, might want to set things to local police force and get your, well, one of your horse divisions here to uh, suppress the Austrians. Don't worry, it won't be there for long. Oh, one advantage of uh, getting Austria via referendum is we get a really good field marshal in Karl here. He's a pretty good field marshal. Why not make him commander of our armies? And we have another batch of political power. Now, regarding your political power, by the time we start fighting our neighbors, those neighbors being Romania and Yugoslavia, we want to have 450 political power in the bank so we can immediately ramp up to war economy, as well as going from disarmed nation up to limited conscription so we at least have some manpower until that time though we are free to spend a little bit of that political power now personally i am going for tanks so i'm getting the tank designer first to get my tanks quicker you could just as easily get the war industrialist a little bit more uh, quickly but i don't think it matters since we have some uh, civilian factories to work through first anyway other good choices are the industrial concern or you could start on your military staff and if you really want more army experience this is also a good time to send an attache to china but me I want my tanks. When we look at our templates, we inherit a lot of trash from Austria. I like to clean this up. I like to use their Schnelle Division. That's pretty good. The Alpjägers, not terrible. We'll hold on to them. We'll get rid of our own Hussars. We'll hold on to the paratroopers. And their infantry division is actually pretty good. We'll just slap on one more infantry unit and some support artillery. This makes for a good 20 combat with line unit. These are going to be our, well, our fodder, our line units to hold and defend while my tanks do the heavy lifting. And I'll just convert all my infantry units into that division. Yes, I know, I don't have the manpower for it. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. That also allows us to get rid of this Hungarian... I can't pronounce that. And again, in your game, if you're going infantry only, don't delete what you're going to use and make different adjustments if you want to play with 7-2s or 14-4s. I'm just doing this for my run. The units don't matter that much. You know by now how you should build a competent infantry division. And with that, Austria-Hungary has been restored. Hey, look, we have factories now. Let's go back to our intelligence agency and get that cryptology department. Let's check out what Germany's doing. Coal liquidization. All right, fine. We have more time. So instead of going for protect Czechoslovakia. Now we are going to delay that until Germany demands the Sudetenland. That combined with boosting our relations to the max, getting some diplomatic pressure on them and getting a non-aggression pact with the Czechs should guarantee their annexation by us. So that should work. And again, should. In preparation of that, we are going to work on our industry a little. I like to start with support domestic industry and then work my way down as far as I can, usually after Institute for Industrial Technique. When we finish this one, that is when Germany usually asserts its eastern claims, but more on that later. As for our industry, we got factories going on everything. Let's build a few more fighters, some support equipment, some towed artillery, and I'll start making some great war tanks. Yes, I know, they're terrible. They count as light tanks, so I'll, I'll use them for that, for now. Right, and with that cryptology department formed, we have our fifth upgrade, meaning we get that third spy soon. Now, if you want, you could get the other upgrades to decryption. It's pretty nice if you're going for cryptology. They are nice bonuses if you're going to be fighting. Once these civilian factories finish, though, I'm going to go ham on military factories. We need to outfit our army soon as we can. And we have another 150 political power. I'm going to be spending that on the war industrialists. We are going to be starting work on the military factories soon. And, well, the faster we build them, the faster we can use them. 
And now for our last spy. Fortunately, a seducer. Unfortunately, it's not one of those that can uh, boost diplomatic pressure easily. So, eh, it's a little bit more difficult to get the checks to like us now, but it should still be fine. It's all about timing. Speaking of timing, let's start preparing a collaboration government in Romania. The quicker we can knock those out, the better. And with our paratroopers done, assign them to a general. Any general will do, doesn't really need to be competent. And we'll just park him here. He can train if you want him to train, doesn't have to. These units are expendable, and we will be using them to snipe Romanian victory points far, far away from the front line. The idea is to capitulate the Romanians with the paratrooper cheese. Yes, I know, I usually don't do this, but we need every edge we can get. Austria-Hungary is difficult enough as it is. Well, not, not difficult per se, annoying. Annoying enough as it is. Alright, with my three levels of dispersed industry, I'm going to reserve this slot now for doctrine if you're playing infantry i recommend superior firepower it is really good me i'm a tank man i'm going for mobile warfare i've also decided against my better judgment in this run to send an attache to china partly because my brain had a bit of a breakdown um we'll see what happens army xp is nice though so we're now starting on our extra research slot the institute here um, usually by the time we finish this, Germany is going to finish army innovations and start on their eastern claims next. We'll see, we'll see. That does mean I'm going to be hoarding political power for now. So we've gotten our extra research slot and Germany has started reassert eastern claims. What we do next is take no focus, take no national focus, just let these 70 days ride out until Germany finishes, reassert Eastern claims and take a look at what they are doing. Yes, I know, we'll be one focus behind, doesn't matter. This means we can bank up 10 days worth of focus and start making a lot of political power. And by the time we are ready to take our next focus, we will always be 10 days ahead of whatever Germany does. So if we can see Germany start demand Sudetenland, we can start the focus, protect Czechoslovakia, giving us a 10 day head start. That's the idea here. Anyway, when Germany is reasserting its eastern claims, we are going to be improving our relations with the Czechs to max those relations out and keep them maxed out, so keep an eye on that. And I'm also going to use one of my spies to put diplomatic pressure on them so we can get them to agree to a non-aggression pact. Meanwhile, for Romania, keep building up the spy network so we are ready to get that second collaboration government. First one worked out well. And we should... There we go. Non-aggression pact is possible with maxed out relations as well as the diplomatic pressure from that spy. When they agreed the non-aggression pact, perfect, and we'll pull that spy out for now, go back to Romania. Remember to keep your relations with the Czechs as high as possible. Same moves for Germany, really, you can improve relations with them as well. Alright, the Germans are about to finish, and their next focus is... Extra research slot. Great, so not Sudetenland, so we can pick a focus as well. Discontinue with the industry. And we'll be 10 days ahead of Germany every Every time. Just keep an eye on whatever they're doing when they start to demand Sudetenland. That is when we switch over to protect Czechoslovakia, put a spy on there just to get more political pressure on them and get another spy on the Germans to exert political pressure so we can get a non-aggression pact due to our high relations and the political pressure. That will stop the Germans from invading us and taking our precious Sudetenland. I told you spies were going to be crucial for this. All right, the Gior program. Every time we finish a focus, we're not immediately gonna start another one. Just wait and see what the Germans do after they finish theirs. We can still bank up 10 days worth of national focus, so we're not losing anything. And they're befriending Japan. If I'm not mistaken, their next one is going to be Sudetenland. Don't take my word on that. Always check and keep relations with the Czechs and the Germans high. All right, domestic arms industry. And again, watch the Germans. Carefully. There we go, they have started demand Sudetenland. That means we are going to start protecting Czechoslovakia. We are now going to take our German spy and give him a new mission, exert diplomatic pressure. We are going to force the Germans into signing a non-aggression pact with our high relations, that should be possible. So keep relations maxed out with the Germans and do the same for the Czechs. And if you want to be really careful, you could take one of those Romanian spies who is currently preparing a collaboration government and assign them as well to diplomatic pressure on Czechoslovakia. And I don't know if this matters, but I'm just going to park my army on the Czech border so they know I mean business. 
All right, Germans are willing to sign a non-aggression pact. They cannot break this. It is impossible for them to break it for the first year. After that, there will be a strength calculation required, but all we need is that first year. So we are in the clear here. As for the Czechs, our relations are high, not maxed yet, but close enough. We've got a non-aggression pact and we've done everything in our power to make them like us. Now it's just going to be up to the AI whether it wants to survive or not. Moment of truth here. And of course, Bohemia returns to the crown. If you follow these steps like I have showed you, they will always agree to annexation every time. This is the least amount of RNG you will have with this achievement. So I hope, I hope that you can replicate these steps in your own playthrough. But enough about that. We have other business to attend to. Now that the Czechs have returned to the crown, we can look south and integrate those other wayward provinces of the empire. So to do that, we will continue on to claim Transylvania. Now let's make quick use of this batch of manpower we have available suddenly. First off, I'm going to get my transports out the door. 20 should be fine. Follow that up with... Let's see, assign all these units. I got tanks, so I'm going to use these tanks. They're not ideal, so I'll change their templates. And the rest of these units can just be standard infantry and I'll park them on the Romanian border. Now to change my armor division into something a little more competent. I know, I know, it's just going to be 20 with light tanks, not the world's greatest fighting unit, but it's far better than this thing we inherited from the Czechs, so it'll have to do. We'll upgrade these to 40 with eventually and we'll probably be using medium tanks before long. We just need numbers in the field for now. I'm also going to change my paratrooper template a little bit. I'm going to remove two of these. Yes, I know, a single battalion of paratroops is pretty meme -y. It is what it is. It's hard enough for the Austrians. So I'm just going to set up paradropping orders on most of the Romanian victory points. I'll choose the high value ones like Bucharest first. Just select the victory point and you can see here how many victory points it has. Pick the high value ones first and then fill out with the rest of your units. And I'll just park everyone on the border for now. Oh, and if the Germans demand a Sudetenland, we can safely say no. We have a non-aggression pact that they cannot break for the first year. So we have uh, some time of safety and we'll use that time to wheedle our way into the Axis eventually, negating the German threat for as long as we like. Eventually... All right, when we finish Claim Transylvania, this event will pop up, or the less likely event that uh, the Romanians simply give you Transylvania. I've never seen that happen, so it's more than likely you'll get this one. Romania refuses to give up. The top option is us backing down. Uh, that's not our thing, so we will go with the bottom option. They went too far this time, which gives us a good national spirit, war preparations, which will cut our justification time in half. So we'll keep the game paused and click that option, and we'll use that national spirit to quickly justify on the Yugoslavs. Any province will do. Slovenia, rightful Austro-Hungarian clay. And we continue. Of course, the Romanians will reject our demands. All right, the event, but let's talk about focuses first. At this point, it doesn't matter which focus you pick. You can choose whichever you like. I like to go with the extra research slot, then some more factories, and then I'll dabble with army or air force. You could do whatever you want. Like I said, at this point, doesn't matter, personal preference. Just don't forget about naval warfare. It would be a good idea to establish some sort of a fleet once you get your hands on a coastline. And this tree still has some claims, but claims are just eh, not that interesting. So yeah, do your own thing here. As for this event, we have two decent options. A relatively safe one is to approach the French. They already guarantee the Romanians, so if they back us in an eventual escalation, that's great. They won't help the Romanians. Uh, we could also approach the Germans if we're feeling lucky. The Germans like us a lot, so odds are they will help us out. Let's roll the dice here. I'll approach the Germans. Ah, Transylvanian compromise. All right, there's a few options you could get as an outcome. One, you get this one, the Transylvanian compromise. Let's accept that. And we get North Transylvania. A uh, second one is where we just get all of Transylvania. So North Transylvania, Transylvania, and 
Grisana. And then there's a couple of negative ones um, where we immediately declare war on the Romanians. And depending on who we chose as our backer, that could draw in the French. It could even draw in the Germans, making the Romanians join the Axis. I've seen some very, very weird things happen with that focus. But none of that really matters at this point. We are simply going to continue. I have put my army on the border with the Romanians so they don't do anything well, strange. I've got my paratroopers in position, though I could probably just delete a couple of these orders that now fall into our territory. There. And uh, I'll keep my tanks around this area so we can quickly swing around to the unprotected Yugoslav flank in case of a fight. Let us continue onwards. Uh, we have a couple of days left. Yeah, about 145 days until we declare on Yugoslavia and draw in the Romania that way. And yes, I know that world tension will go over 25% while we're justifying. Don't worry about it. We will not have generated more than 10% world tension, which means no other nation is going to be guaranteeing people we're justifying on until we have reached that 10% threshold. Very nice. We will be able to eat Yugoslavia and Romania in one go. And they're just Justification is complete. They did not pick up any guarantees, or other than the Romanian ones they already had. So we just declare war. This will draw in the Romanians, which is perfectly fine. Now for the Yugoslavs, we'll simply hold this border for a bit. It's the Romanians that will be knocking out first. Their Romania joins. Our air force should be taking to the sky any second now, and we can deploy our paratroopers. We're now also at war, so it's time to immediately ramp up to limited conscription. And uh, oh, we cannot go up to war economy. That's unfortunate. Now oh, well. We'll just use that for something else then. And with these power drops, we should be able to knock the Romanians out relatively quickly. Let's see. Already taken a few victory points. Yeah, they're already done for. And there goes Romania. All right, time to fix that border because this is horrible. Put my paratroopers back on their airport. The Romanian front can redeploy to the eastern edge along with my armor. And we will quickly try to drive a wedge. Make use of that excellent speed we have on these tanks. Take all the territory we can before the Yugoslavs are able to redeploy their armies. Oh, as for Romania, simply take all states. We'll have a good amount of compliance in these states already, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue to hold on to it, the territory. And yes, I know it's a little cheesy, but like I said a thousand times already, every edge we can get, we are going to take. I'm just going to pair drop the sudden victory points in Yugoslavia. I don't feel like fighting my way through this entire territory. Should be easy enough to knock them out this way. Anyway, while this is going on, almost forgot about it. We could justify in Poland, though that is not going to be helpful since we will never make it before the Germans walk in. It's already September of 39. So instead, I'm going to justify a war call on the British. Yes, this is going to put us directly at odds with the Allies, which is fine. We will use that war to join the Axis, try and capitulate the United Kingdom as quickly as possible, and then we'll see from there. Anyway, Yugoslavia. All right, we've taken Belgrade. I'm going to finish this off with power drops. As soon as we get aerial superiority, might as well just use the cipher. There we go, Yugoslavia has capitulated and will simply take all territory. And with that, look at how chunky Austria-Hungary has become. And we can already reintegrate the empire in 1939, giving us a very healthy amount of cores. All right, so far, so good. Next order of business, we'll be finishing this justification on the UK. We'll use that as a jumping point to, well, make our way into the Axis faction and giving us safety from those nasty, nasty Germans. Meanwhile, we will keep building more troops. And I'll just park my army on the German border for now, just in case they get funny ideas. Don't really trust those Germans. And also keep training more troops. We should be getting more and more manpower available to us. Now, one downside of only acquiring a coastline by late 1939 is we don't really have a chance to build up a competent navy to execute our naval invasions before, well, before the US is going to join in early 1941. So I am building some convoys. You could stop building convoys. You have enough to make the invasion happen and just go all in on submarines. Then again, we don't even have the naval experience to make submarines, which means we 
would have to rush for naval warfare next. We could get a couple of submarines out the door, though at best we can sneak past the Royal Navy. We'll never be able to contest them for naval superiority. You might get lucky in these sea zones, the Eastern North Sea and the North Sea, if Germany is doing some fleet operations in the area in preparation of their invasion of Norway. So that is one avenue into the UK. The other option is massive para drops all over the UK trying to take a port, any port, and then quickly funneling your troops in. I am going to be making a couple of submarines, mostly because I will also be fighting, well, the Axis at some point. So I will need some semblance of a fleet, but I think I will be banking on the paratroopers for this run since, well, it's already so late and we just need a way into the UK. And Poland refuses German ultimatum. So Poland is going to disappear. Uh, don't worry though, the Germans won't be too inclined to fight us. They'll be busy fighting the Allies. Meanwhile, we steam ahead towards that war goal. Uh, we have some time, 150 days, and we just try to build up our army as best we can. Build yourself a good, solid invasion force. For me, that will be tanks. Sadly, it's going to be 20 with light tanks since, uh, well, I'm having a manpower issue. I could possibly ramp these up to 40 with. We'll see. If you're playing infantry, I recommend getting a good, solid army of 14 fours ready for the invasion to be your spearhead and fill out the front line after the landing with these lads, these classic 10 zeros. Ah, right. One thing you can't forget about. Bessarabia. The Soviet Union might want your Bessarabia. Well, you could just keep an eye on how long it's going to take for them to justify and by the time they're almost done, we can quickly resolve the issue by going into our occupied territories and releasing the nation of Moldova, which gets, uh, I think, Bessarabia and Southern Bessarabia and not have to worry about it. That will just make the Soviets waste 145 days. Alternatively, we can garrison the front line and fight tooth and nail over it, but uh, do be aware, we're also trying to knock out the United Kingdom here. If I'm not mistaken, we do not need anything from the Soviet Union. So if we can avoid a war with the Soviet Union, that would be helpful. We pretty much just need stuff the Axis control and some stuff off the UK like Palestine and Jordan for some reason. So yeah, if you're feeling particularly um, feisty, be my guest and take on the USSR. I think I'm just gonna cheese it myself by just releasing Moldova and being done with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and release Moldova as a puppet. And suddenly that justification they were doing is invalid and they've moved on to other territories. They're gonna take on the Baltics. Let them eat the Baltics, I do not care. Moldova isn't required territory anyway. And our justification is finished. We'll simply declare on the allies. It's fine. We should, once a bit of time goes by, get an invitation to the Axis from the Germans, provided they still like us. I have been boosting relations, so that should be fine. And just to be on the safe side, I'll quickly garrison my coastal provinces so we don't get any unexpected naval invasions behind our lines suddenly. That would be bad. Now, it is already April of 1940, and the Germans haven't really done anything. I'm, I'm not sure what Germany's playing at here, but uh, yeah, they, they haven't really pushed anywhere. Usually France is gone by now. So this is turning into a bit of a, a, a strange one, I'll say. But we'll just quickly join the Axis. So yeah, in this case, I'm, I'm in a very weird scenario. Usually Germany has knocked out France and the entire continent by now. That hasn't happened. Germany is just massing. I wouldn't say massing. Germany doesn't have any troops anywhere. I have no idea what the Germans are doing or where their army is for that matter. This is weird. Anyway, um, we are going to quickly help them knock out the Low Countries and France, and then we can use these airports to try an invasion of the UK. And we'll also ramp up to extensive conscription and war economy. Oh yeah, one downside of joining the Axis. Uh, yeah, the Bulgarian leech will take some of your territory. Uh, Southern Serbia and Macedonia. Fortunately, these are not important territories for the achievement, and they're not that resource rich anyway. They're occupied territory, so no harm done there. It's just damn you, Bulgaria. Anyway, back here. Oh, leave it to Germany to fail to invade even the Netherlands, right? So naturally, the one time I'm recording, everything goes wrong and Germany fails to even capitulate the Low Countries. Fortunately, with our help, we've managed to uh, solve that issue. Once you break the Low Countries, France is wide open. They don't have the equipment to keep going anyway. So yeah, just knock out the French if you still have to. Ah, 
There, finally. Of course, the one time I'm recording, the, <laughs> the Germans do terribly. The problem's fixed. Now we can turn our attention to the UK. We have a little less than a year to capitulate the United Kingdom. And to do that, well, let's see. Our navy isn't much to look at, just a couple of submarines. So let's not use that. Instead, we will try and focus our attention on air and paradrops. Finish up whatever units are left on the continent and get ready for paradropping the United Kingdom. Now the challenge will be actually reaching the UK. They are probably going to be contesting the air, so we'll have to be quick about this by putting up our air force and immediately setting off our paradrops. So it's going to require some timing tight timing and i do hope they aren't actually um you know guarding their ports all that well because that might be a problem i very much prefer naval invasions but like i said we don't get a coastline until late 39 and i could start churning out subs but it's gonna be super late to the party now there's a couple of approaches to this uh the easiest one but also a big gamble is just mass paratropping every UK port in range and hoping you get one of them unguarded and immediately ship your army in. The second approach is to drop a paratrooper right next to an enemy port. Wait for that port guard to walk out to fight your paratrooper. It will defeat the paratroopers since they're garbage units. And when doing that, they will walk out of the port to complete their attack. And the second they leave the port, you fire up a second paradrop order for the port itself. That tile should now be empty, but that does require more micromanagement. I'm gonna try the mass paradrop approach and hope I'm lucky. All right, I've got all my armies in position right across the channel, ready to support my paratroopers should they be able to take a port. All right, uh, I'm going to set the paratroop orders to be active. Let's see if we can actually contest the air. So I've got my air forces assigned to southern England and, well, whatever has range is also over northern England. Um, got my close air support in position as well. Hopefully, hopefully this works out. I much prefer naval invasions, but you need a fleet to do those. So let's see how this plays out. Okay, we managed to sneak air superiority, so... Let's drop, drop, drop. Okay, extremely lucky here. Dover is ours. Immediately going to send over my tanks and get going. Uh, I'll keep the other paratrop orders going. They will serve as very valuable distractions, trying to uh, delay the enemy as much as possible. All right, so far, so good. Most of our paratrops have been successful. The UK has started to contest us in the south, but our army is about to hit the port. So with these tanks in position, I can strike back. If we can take enough territory in the north, I'll also send some diversionary armies there. It is going to be important to, to really make things happen quickly. I don't want to give the UK the chance to dig in. All right, no more paradrops are going to be happening. I'm going to cancel the remaining paradrop orders. It just clutters up the screen. And uh, I'll micro what I can with my tanks and the landed paradroops. Hopefully we can do some damage. The regular army is also en route. We'll see if we can take them on. All right, so I've got London entirely surrounded after a quick lightning war with my tanks. I've left some token regular infantry behind as well as my paratroopers to ensure no breakouts happen. And meanwhile, I am cleaning up the rest of the island until I can turn my attention south. British resistance is stiffening as you push further north though. I believe I've caught most of their army either in Africa or in, well, far-flung places. Uh, but they are returning home, and those are the only ports they have left. So they're landing troops to the north, and it's horrible terrain to push through. So speed is going to be of the essence. 
You can take them down while grinding them, really. There's At this point, there's very little UK can do to stop you. Especially if you can keep your ports guarded while you're doing this. But still, you want to hurry up and do this before the US joins in about May-ish, I think, of 1941. So we do have the time. Oh, and once you establish air superiority, your close air support can be devastating to the enemy. And with our quick lightning war and, of course, helping out the Germans, actually winning the war on the continent, we've got a nice amount of war participation. You may not have this amount, but that's fine. This war is just fought to get the Allies out of the running so the US does not get involved. Anything you can take here is nice, but again, it's not vital. As far as the UK is doing, they're almost out of the picture. When we take London, it's over, so I like to clean up the entire island first to maximize our participation. Oh, we've inflicted massive casualties. 20 minutes later. Alright, we've taken the entire island safe for London. The capital is fully surrounded. We can end this whenever we want, so I'm getting my tanks in position for a concerted effort to dislodge the last remaining defenders from London. Oh, of course. Yeah, well, there goes Greece. And in a few short hours, this will all be over. There, we have taken London. Let's have a look here. We've managed to gather ourselves 34% more participation, though much of that is going to be from fighting on the continent, uh, like in my run. A pretty unusual situation, but if that doesn't happen for you, you should still get enough participation to carve out at least a tiny UK puppet that you can use to, uh, you know, steal a fleet from. So let's keep going. There we go. UK has capitulated. All right, that's the peace deal done. So let's take a look at what I managed to take. I managed to take most, well, pretty much all of Egypt, along with uh, much required territories of Palestine and Jordan. I did take Franche Comté, though I have no intentions of defending it until we've actually cleaned up Germany. Maybe if I can take out Vichy France early. We've managed to create a very nice and juicy UK puppet here under Alexander Hamilton. Other than that, we've also managed to puppet the Canadians. Very nice flag here. And we've also managed to puppet the Raj. The Hungarian Raj, yeah, yeah. I'd say we've done quite well. Now we need to gear up for an all-out war with the Axis, the only real threat left to us. And to do that, I will be forcing down the independence of the UK as quickly as I can by building a lot of stuff in their territory and giving them all the convoys I can without hurting my own economy. While we're still in the Axis, I'm also going to quickly justify on the Vichy French. Once I have enough political power, it's an easy enough fight to quickly take them out. And it does, does help in the eventual struggle with the Germans. We're now going to wait and build up our strength as much as we can with our current manpower and industry. We'll take the British fleet by annexing them through the puppet mechanics. And we will wait for Germany and Italy to commit to the Soviet Union. I don't need anything from the Soviets, so the longer that fight draws out, the better. All right, we've finished justifying on Corsica. Time to quickly take out Vichy France. At this point, they're just free real estate anyway. Also, don't call in the Axis. Should be able to defeat them relatively easily. Also, just their continental holdings usually just isn't enough to capitulate them. You'll have to take whatever they have in Africa as well. It's a, it's a little annoying, but eh, it, is, it is what it is. And there goes Vichy France. Now, I don't recommend puppeting Vichy France. They are a horrible puppet that will eventually join the Axis via their focus. You could take the territory for yourself if you're so inclined, but it's a bit horrible to defend. It, it creates a very, very long front line with the Germans, and unlike the Germans, we do not have infinite manpower. Rather, I like to start satelliting and puppeting things, so I'm just gonna satellite Free France here. Not Vichy France, but Free France. And I'll just give them whatever. There, we now have a nice Bourbon puppet under, well, someone. Now all we have to do is wait for the Germans to declare on the Soviets and then when they are balls deep into Soviet territory, we strike and take out the Axis. And in preparation of our glorious conflict with the Axis, I am recruiting ever more divisions. I'm building more tanks because I like tanks and I keep building in the UK so we can push them all the way down to annexed, which will require a little bit more work. Two hours later. And we can annex the UK. 
clickety clack and we have ourselves oh good lag and a massive massive fleet there we go the entire royal navy is now at our disposal let's send them all home to their new home in austria hungary all right uh i could just release the uk again at this point it doesn't matter to us we don't need the area and i really don't want to have to worry about garrisoning the region so I'm just going to release them as a puppet once again. Great Britain, there we go. We still hold on to all the territory that actually matters. Now, I'm in a bit of a pickle. Uh, it appears my construction has completely bugged out. Yeah, this is annoying. I hope Ruby Start fixes it because the game doesn't know where my factories are. You can see the screen is, is completely glitched out. So eh, the game is probably still trying to build stuff in the UK. Annoying, but... Oh well. And Germany has broken the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact. And so it begins. We are going to let the Axes do their thing. And we are simply going to continue building up our strength until we are ready to strike at the German heartland. Let them bleed in Russia. I need a lot more divisions before I'm ready to challenge the Axis. And with the Axis no longer having a war goal on us, might as well just leave the faction. I was gonna force the Germans to keep troops on these borders and not allow them to go all in on Russia. And that's just gonna draw out that conflict even more. Meanwhile, we can finally get our troops into a proper position. Just gonna quickly justify on the Italians. Uh, retake our state, 20 days, good deal. They'll never know what hit him. Currently can't spare the manpower to put troops in Franche Comte. I also don't want to, you know, lose the territory. So let's just quickly give that to my puppet. I'll annex my puppet later on so it doesn't really matter. There, you hold on to Franche Comte for me, Bourbon France. And there goes our war goal. This is going to be exciting and spicy. The final leg of our journey. We will destroy the Axis. And we'll just declare war. I have no idea where the Italians are. I'm not going to call in my puppets. Keep my front nice and narrow. But it doesn't look like a lot of these Italians are home. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be easy to exploit. Oh, and Istria. Yeah, I'm going to eat you too. Bit of a quick lightning offensive should take him out. I wonder what the Germans are gonna do. I'm gonna take my speed way, way down and micro this conflict. I just want this to be over as quickly as I can. Oh, the Japanese are in. All right, and the Germans are in. Now, this is where the fun begins. I'm also gonna justify in Bulgaria. I have a feeling that they will not willingly join this conflict quickly. I, I just wanna get rid of them. Uh, this is a big front that I have to maintain just because of these stupid Bulgarians. All right, most of our border is holding, though I, I guess the Germans are throwing most of their strength towards the Soviet Union. So the sooner we knock out Italy, the better. It, it doesn't even look like I need a naval invasion for Italy. They're just rolling over. I don't know where their troops are, but uh, yeah, this is fine, I guess. Oh, it looks like Italians are showing up after all. Yeah, I'll keep pushing a little, see where it goes. All right, our invasion of northern Italy will have to hold a little... Uh, Troops are arriving, and these divisions really aren't made for attacking. So I'll just hold here, quickly naval invade somewhere down the center, cut them in half with my tanks, and move on. Uh, the north is holding, though I need to use most of my air force here just to contest the Germans. Our CAS is inflicting serious damage, though they are shooting some of it down, and our fighters are superior to whatever the Germans can feel at this point. We may not have as many as they do, although we are winning locally. Uh, we should come out ahead in the long run. Our fighters are way, way ad more advanced than theirs. We're fielding fighter threes and close air support three at this point. All right, let's see if we can quickly knock these Italians out. Shouldn't be too difficult. Oh, Bulgarians got themselves involved. Uh, got mostly infantry there, and I just launched my naval invasion. I'm gonna hold that naval invasion, send those troops back to port, and just quickly redeploy them to knock out Bulgaria first. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, it's stupid. Yeah, knocking out Bulgaria is not much of a challenge with this armor. Bye-bye. Ah, much better. All right, with Bulgaria out of the picture, I can divert my troops back to their naval invasions, get Italy knocked out. Though it's good that we managed to get the south secure. That was a bit annoying. Oh, that's bad. German breakout. I had not noticed that yet. All right, gotta quickly, quickly bottle that up. And again, I think I need to redeploy my armor just to clean up this mess that uh, I've allowed. Oh, I'm bad. It was bad. All right, nice, nice encirclement here. That should solve the issue. Just gotta quickly close the gap now. Uh, and I can finally divert my attention back to Italy. That's a good amount of Germans cleaned up. That should stabilize my northern front pretty much entirely. Fine, that's good. 
Now back to Italy with that mess cleaned up. This is taking long enough. Let's get going. It shouldn't be too difficult. I'm running a little low on fuel though. Fuel is gonna be an issue. Might need to ground some air forces. Naval invasion fairly successful. We've cut the Italians in half. Shouldn't be long now before they go completely tits up. Uh, oil's all gone though, so ooh. Navy needs to go back to port. Need to concern every bit of fuel I can. God, my army's using so much fuel. Oh, thank God the Italians have caved. Good. That frees up a lot of resources for the other fronts, mostly my tanks, and they will be used to devastating effect to probably try and cut Germany in half around Danzig. Is that Danzig? No, Stettin. I've also shifted my trade laws back down to limited exports. I was just giving too much of my oil and raw resources away. It's it's much better this way. I have a lot more spare factories to build more synthetic refineries because oil is going to be a problem. Well, not so much a problem as it is a challenge, let's say. Well, Germany has nothing to stop this armored thrust. 40 with mediums are just so good. They're fast, they're well armored, do a lot of damage. Infantry just can't stand up to them. And just like that, we've effectively cut the German front in half. Nice. Nice. Yeah, Germany has nothing left at this point. Most of their army is fighting the Soviets and is trapped in this massive pocket on the Eastern Front. Sure, they could funnel troops out via sea, but um, yeah, their Western flank is wide open and we're just breaking through with our armor. And we've taken Berlin. How much more can the Germans really resist us? Oh, quite a bit, actually. They still have almost 300 divisions but i think most of those are stuck in this gigantic pocket and yeah they're wasting a lot of troops guarding france all right we've taken the port of konigsberg this entire section of the german army is cut off they still got some divisions in the west but honestly they've got they're, they're nowhere near capable of resisting us and for some reason the ai will keep all these divisions on neutral fronts or uninvolved fronts i mean if they could throw that at this front they might actually be able to hold me a little bit oh uh, the ai does need some work man the ai needs some work anyway time to collapse this pocket and i'll throw everything at western germany we can be done one eternity later and there it goes germany and with that the final peace deal is here now, all we need is Oberschlesien, Niederschlesien, I think South Tyrol, Lombardy, Emilia Romagna, our cores, naturally. Uskni, I think. And that's about all the territory we would require for this achievement to be done. With that and a, f a few misclicks, um, I'm sorry. I've created a horrible, horrible mess, but it is over. All we need to do now is integrate the French and this can be done with. Et voila. And with that, we now control all of the territory required for Miklos Horthy and the Habsburg Prince. Just, just don't pay attention to this horrible border gore. If you are so inclined, you can still build yourself a battleship. I've been researching some stuff for it to get yourself the other achievement, better than this tank is fun, where you just need to build a battleship as Austria-Hungary and assign Miklos Horthy as the actual admiral. He is currently commanding what was, at some point, the Royal Navy, but apparently he needs to get a ship of his own. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. With this new strategy, a lot of the RNG from the old guide goes out the door and this is far more reliable and as such enjoyable. It's a lot easier as well if you use tanks but this should work with infantry as well. I had a lot of fun. Now if you like this video leave a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload more content. If you didn't like it that's fine just hit that dislike button. Tell me what I did wrong. I'm always looking to improve. That said, if you want to support what I do and support the channel, check out that membership. Hit that join button. It will take you to the YouTube membership page. It has all the information you need. Anyway, this has been me, Bitter Steel. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.